You're listening to More Than a Song, episode 424. Hello, and welcome to this episode of More Than a Song. My name is Michelle Nizat, and this is the podcast dedicated to helping you discover the truth of Scripture, hidden in today's popular Christian music. My goal is to teach you to connect portions of God's Word with the songs you're singing along with on the radio, to help you meditate on truths that will transform your way of thinking and ultimately your life. Sometimes there's a song that just reverberates in your inner being like like echoes in the Grand Canyon, bouncing off every wall of your heart. And this week's song by Maverick City Music was like that for me. A few weeks ago, I heard Firm Foundation, He Won't, For the first time when our worship team sang it at our church. And to be honest, I kind of like how they did it better because when the lyrics pose the question, why would he fail now? Our visiting worship leader paused before his penetrating, deep James Earl Jones type voice resounded. He won't. Uh, It all sounds so simple as I'm trying to explain it to you here, but it was two of the most profound words that I needed to hear and then sing back to God. So that was my inspiration to start listening to the song, but my study, my study has only bolstered what the lyrics have to offer. But before we dive in, let's listen. This song has acted like a declaration for me in the last month, and I have used it to rehearse truths. Truths like, I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus. Things like, he is my firm foundation, the rock on which I stand. Truths like, he's been faithful through generations, and he won't stop now. And he's been faithful through seasons, and he won't stop now. And so when personal or family crisis grips your heart and invades your thoughts, you need to fix your eyes on Jesus. And so I love that the first word of this song is Christ. Too often, you know, the first word is me or I or something about us. And too often we want what God can do for us more than we want him. God does not change. He is not impacted by your current chaos. And even when it seems like the enemy is winning battles left and right, God is faithful. Want to know how I know? Well, More than my personal experience, which is true, he reveals his faithfulness to us in his word. And that's where we see that he's been faithful through every generation and he won't stop now. So today I want to really use this song to challenge us to move beyond the lyrics into the deeper truths that they merely summarize. Remember, don't let your Christian music be the only scripture that you read. Use it as a catalyst to really dive into the deep stuff. So we're going to start with Christ. What does scripture say about Christ being a firm foundation and how does our life and role fit into that role of Christ or partner with that role of Christ. Then we're going to remind ourselves of what we studied way back in episode 414. God alone is our rock and salvation and we won't be shaken. Then we're going to go to Deuteronomy to discover the first mention of rock, capital R, being used as a proper name of God and explore a contrast there. It's something I discovered for the first time this week. It was so cool. Then we're going to come back to a teaching of Jesus that clearly declares how we are to build our lives on him and the results, something we will sing back to God in the bridge of this song. It's a lot, I know, but I'll introduce you to all the areas of scripture and then you can dive deeper in on your own this week. 
How does that sound? All right. So in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, Paul is writing about divisions in the church. He's talking about the right and wrong way to build on the foundation and reminds us that Christ is that foundation. In verse, verse 11, he writes, for no one can lay a foundation other than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. So just as our song says, Christ is our firm foundation. And I encourage you to explore Old and New Testament areas that describe Christ as a rock known as the cornerstone. So Isaiah 28 says, Therefore, thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am the one who has laid as a foundation in Zion a stone, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone of a sure foundation. Whoever believes will not be in haste. We could t- we could stop here and make a list of the characteristics of this stone. And making a list is a Bible interaction tool exercise that I love. I call these exercises bites for short. I share with you the bites that I use every week to study the word. And I pray that you would try them in your own study time. Uh, but here's what I would put on my list from the English Standard Version. This stone is tested. This stone is precious. This stone is the cornerstone, and this stone is a sure foundation. So the next time you sing, Christ is my firm foundation, you might rehearse these characteristics too in your mind. You might say, yes, Lord, firm foundation. You're tested and precious and the cornerstone, and you're firm, you're sure. Now, Jesus quotes Psalm 118 when in Mark he says, Have you not read this scripture? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. So Jesus is quoting Psalm 118, and he's pointing to himself saying, I'm the cornerstone. So what is a cornerstone exactly? I'm going to link to a great article over on gotquestions.org. But in short, a cornerstone was the principal stone, usually placed at the corner of a building. And that cornerstone then becomes the guide or the starting place that the workers will move off of in their course of building the, the house or the building. So the cornerstone was usually one of the largest the most solid, and the most carefully constructed of any in the building project. And the Bible describes Jesus as the cornerstone that his church would be built on. And he's foundational. So once that cornerstone is set, he becomes the basis for determining every measurement in the remaining construction. Everything is aligned to the cornerstone. So as the cornerstone of the building of the church, Jesus is our standard of measure and alignment. So when Peter teaches us about Jesus as the cornerstone, he gives him another title. He he calls him the living stone. Uh, He's all the while he's quoting Isaiah 28. He's quoting Psalm 118. He's quoting another place out of Isaiah 8 to make his point. So let's go ahead and read it together, starting in 1 Peter 2, verse 4. As you come to him... A living stone rejected by men, but in the sight of God, chosen and precious. There's our word again, precious. You yourselves, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, behold, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. That's what we just read in Isaiah 28, and Peter's quoting that here. Peter goes on to say, so the honor is for you who believe, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. That's what Jesus was quoting from Psalm 18, uh, Psalm 118, when he, when we just read that out of Mark. And then Peter goes on in verse 8 and, quote, he's quoting Isaiah 8 here, a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. So again, this comes from Isaiah 8, where the context is God telling Isaiah that God himself will be a stone that people trip over. Not as a trick, it's not a trap, but because they reject who God and Christ really, who they are. They reject God Um, They have their own ideas of things. We see that all the time. And so they're going to trip over this rock. This precious cornerstone is going to be a stumbling block for them because it's not going to make sense to them in in the way that they have decided they want to live their lives and think things. You, You know what I'm talking about here. You see it all the time. But did you catch what we are in all of this? 
Christ is the living stone, but we are like living stones too. We are being built up as a spiritual house. And this is speaking of the body of Christ, the church, capital C church. Our identity as living stones in Christ is never as individuals. Obviously, we are individual stones, but we are always part of the whole, part of the body of Christ. And then Paul reiterates that in Ephesians 2, if you want to check that out as well. All right, so let's move on to the idea that not only is Christ a firm foundation, a tested, precious, and sure cornerstone that our lives are to be built on him as part of a spiritual house, but he is the only foundation. And so when you declare in this song that he is the rock on which you stand, let's make sure we're not jumping from rock to rock. Let's stay committed to the only rock of our salvation. Only then will we remain unshaken. I don't want to reteach what I unpacked thoroughly in episode 414. So to really meditate on this, go back and listen to that episode as a companion to this week. Uh, I do want to just recap real quick. So head over to Psalm 62. Let's start in verse 5. It says, For God alone, O my soul, I wait in silence, for my hope is from him. He only is my rock and my salvation. My fortress, I shall not be shaken. On God rests my salvation and my glory. My mighty rock, my refuge is God. So this psalm, I jumped in at verse 5, but verse 1 and 2, it starts out this way. It says, he alone is the uh, the rock and the, our salvation. It repeats the same idea here. He only is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall not be shaken. Our song sings, sings of that. On God rests my salvation and my glory, my mighty rock, my refuge is God. So just like our song declares, we put our faith in Jesus and he is the strong and mighty rock. Our salvation rests in him alone, not our own strength, not the strength of another. Again, I want to move on from here, but Go ahead and use episode 414 to really meditate on this further. It's going to be a perfect companion. Now, I want to move on from this figurative description of God as our rock to the use of rock as a proper name of God. And you will find this in Deuteronomy chapter 32. And this is a song that Moses taught the people. And he used a song because we remember lyrics and rhythm and rhyme far better and for far longer than recitations and grand speeches. You know this. You wake up singing songs. You don't wake up rehearsing Uh, recitations, right? So I highly recommend you read Deuteronomy 32 in context. That's my favorite bite, by the way, uh, because it leads me to number one, interact with more of the text of scripture, but it keeps me also in the context of what the original author was writing about and gives me greater understanding of themes as I'm, as I read more of scripture. So I loosely define reading in context as at least the chapter before the chapter and the chapter after. In this case, however, I just recommend that at minimum you back up to chapter 31 of Deuteronomy and then just read through the remainder of Deuteronomy to get the final context of Moses's life where we read this song. It's like an extra chapter if you do it that way. I have to warn you, though, (laughs) this song is sort of a bummer in context because God instructed Moses. He said, now, therefore, write this song and teach it to the people of Israel. Put it in their mouths that this song may be a witness for me against the people of Israel. Yep, you heard that right. It was against the people of Israel because God knew they would abandon him even in light of all he is and in light of all he had done for them. So Moses wrote the song the same day that God told him. And I wish we could study this song together. We're running out of time today. And I really really don't want to give you an excuse to skip the step where you read the scripture for yourself. I do want to point out a couple of verses in this song in Deuteronomy 32, just to get you started. Verse four is where we see rock used first as a proper name of God. First time in the Bible, the rock capital R his work is perfect for all his ways are justice, a God of faithfulness and without iniquity, just and upright is he. I chose this one to be our focus memory verse for the week because it includes his name as the rock and his faithfulness that our song sings about as well. Sounds nice so far, but right after this verse is when the song takes a turn and puts the spotlight on the Israelites in direct contrast to the faithfulness of God. 
They are a miserably unfaithful people. And the song goes back and forth, reminding them of their faithful rock and their woeful response to him. And you can use the bite of compare and contrast as you study this song. You know, really look at the characteristics of God and then look at the characteristics of people, uh, of his people in this song. You know, uh, write it down, write it out and really interact with this song and using that bite of compare and contrast. But it's in verse 31 where we see God offering up a contrast between himself, rock, capital R, and the God of the enemies, rock, lowercase r. And Moses writes this lyric, for their rock, lowercase r, is not as our rock, capital R. Our enemies are by themselves. You see, their rock abandons. Their rock is not faithful. If you asked why would their rock fail, the answer would not be he won't. It would be he will. And yet we jump from rock to rock when we do not remain faithful to him and his word. And I want to give you one more place in scripture to explore before we sign off today. And that is Matthew chapter 7 verses 24 through 27. The truth of this part of Jesus' teaching is reflected in the bridge of our song. Our song sings our reality, really. It says, rains came, winds blew, but my house was built on you. It doesn't say if. It's more like a when, just like what we see in the words of Jesus in Matthew 7. Verse 24 says, everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, but it did not fall, because it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. I want you to check out episode 271 as another partner episode where I really unpack this area of scripture, but I do want to summarize by saying this. We can only declare that our house is built on Christ if we hear his words and do them. That is how we build our lives on the firm foundation, the rock of Christ. So what's next? Thanks for hanging in there with me. (laughs) I know we hopped around a little bit today. I really hope you're inspired to invest some time in God's word this week as inspired by the song. I know now that I have spent some time in God's word and, and really dug in and interacted with the text. The song is even more meaningful to me now that I've done that than it was before. And it was pretty powerful before. So explore Christ as our foundation, the cornerstone by using the scriptures I've listed in the show notes. And you can find those at michellekneesat.com forward slash four two four. Or if you're an email subscriber, they're in your inbox, okay? So read and meditate on Psalm 62, where we're reminded that God alone is our rock and our salvation. Don't miss out on what you'll learn in Deuteronomy 32 by contrasting his faithfulness um, with his unfaithful people. And then finally, commit to building your life on the rock of Christ by doing what he teaches in Matthew 7. Hear his words and do them. And then while you're in God's word this week, let me know how you're doing. Email me, michelle at michellekneesat.com. You can hop on Twitter at Michelle Nizat or Instagram at Michelle Nizat. My public page is Michelle L. Nizat on Facebook. And let's talk about what you're learning. Now, More Than a Song is a proud member of the NRT Podcast Network. You can check out other podcasts in the network and Christian music resources at newreleasetoday.com. I would be honored if you subscribe to the podcast wherever you listen to podcasts so that you never miss an episode. But if you sign up on my website as well, michellekneesat.com, then I'm able to email you once a week with those show notes that I talked about, with all the scriptures that I use, and then live links to the resources that I use in my personal studies. Sometimes I mention them and sometimes I don't, but I always give them to my email subscribers. Now, my featured free resource this week is my 30-day music challenge, which is to listen exclusively to Christian music for 30 days. And so I walk with you with one-minute videos every day. It's free. Head over to michellekneesat.com forward slash 30-day challenge to take the challenge. Change your music 
change your life. And with that in mind, I want to thank all of my new subscribers who've subscribed recently, like Chrissy from Massachusetts, Deanne from Georgia, Leslie from Illinois, Kevin from Tennessee, Anna from Tennessee, Jackie from Australia, Carl from Michigan, Drew from Texas, Mike from Michigan, Teresa from Minnesota, Joan from Missouri, Sheila from Ohio, Denise from Georgia, Shelly from Texas, Shelly from Hawaii, and Mary from Florida. Welcome. Now, don't forget, you can listen to the podcast directly on my website at michellenizat.com through iTunes or the Apple Podcast app. You can follow on Spotify or through Stitcher Radio or your podcast listening app of choice. And you can leave a review by heading over to lovethepodcast.com forward slash more than a song. Well, that's it for this episode of More Than a Song. Next week, I will be using See Me Through It by Brandon Heath to dive into scripture. If you liked this episode, however, would you mind sharing it with others? I've made it really easy. With just one click, you can share via Facebook, Twitter, or email. Just head over to michellekneesat.com forward slash 424. While you're there, I'd love to hear from you. Click on comment to join the conversation. Until next time, take time to meditate on God's word and consider his ways.